Aloha. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Pastor Josh, and we just want to welcome you. It's a lovely morning here at First Fam. And all of you who are online, we want to welcome you. Thank you for joining us on our Sunday morning service. You know, it's just great to be here. We've got all these people with lovely masks waving at me and smiling with their eyes out here. So we want to let you know, those online, we are open for in-person gatherings. And uh, we, we have our 8 o'clock, our 10.15, as well as our 6 p.m. service. I don't know about you, but I really enjoyed the series that we've been in that Pastor Cole's been teaching on strategic stops. And the other day, one of my pastor friends, he said, what do you do to rest? And that's a question I'd like for you guys to think about. If you're on the internet right now, if you go ahead and what do you do when you rest and he was specific saying what do you, what do what should pastors do during the rest and of course my wife answered running errands for his wife yeah and it's exactly what i do run errands for my wife make sure the house is clean but i'd like to know what do you do for your rest what do you do to find rest and rejuvenation and i and even in your sabbath so it's really important as we're in strategic stops that we identify what refreshes our soul. And Pastor Ko has been uh, just bringing incredible messages to our series, Strategic Stops. And if you're online, I just want to let you know that we have our website. You can check it out. If you're even here and you, you haven't looked at our website, we've got a lot of things about who we are as a church. We are one church in six locations, a church with a passion for the Lord and a vision to reach the lost. And we believe uh, in, in really reaching uh, people, but also worshiping God. And in a, about eight minutes, we're going to come together. We're going to start off with worship and praise. And then we're going to hear a word from the Lord. We believe that faith comes through by hearing and hearing the word of God. And in times like crisis and times like this, we need the word of God. We need to be fed in our spirits and also in our souls. And I just want to encourage you, on the website, you'll find a lot of different things as well. Today, we are starting our School for Christian Growth. And you want to check it out. You can sign up for these Sunday school classes. Um, they're on the website, right on the page. This is purple picture, School for Christian Growth. And I was able, they have classes on Thursday, as well as Sunday, both first and second service, and also on Sunday afternoon. And I am taking one of those classes. It's on Thursday night. It's uh, God's providential plan in his Hawaiian history. Wow, it's an awesome class. If you're interested in knowing more about uh, what, how God's hand has been over our Hawaiian uh, history, uh, you definitely want to check out this class. It's on Thursday at 6.30. Uh, so we've got a lot of incredible things. But again, if you're online, share this with a friend. Uh, today, God is going to do an incredible work. And join us, even in your spaces. Let's get ready, prepared for worship. And I'll see you guys all in a little bit. Aloha.
Aloha. Amen. Let's all stand at this time. We want to welcome you, those who are here. Let, let's prepare our hearts and to worship the Lord. And those of you online, our first fam, welcome. And we pray that as we kick off our service this morning, that even in your house, that the presence of God would meet you. But right here, we believe that God is going to just do a powerful work. You know, before, before uh, I ever have uh, guests over my house, I always uh, have that day or two to prepare to move things around, to make sure things are clean. And I just want us for a moment as, as we ask God to enter, and actually we're in His house, but also that we would allow the house of our heart to be prepared for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For Him to be welcome into this place, to welcome into our heart, to welcome His presence and that He would be pleased to be here. And so what I'd like us to do is as we pray, let's set an atmosphere in our hearts. Let's take a moment right now to, 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 to focus our attention and, and move things and say, God, let, let me clean these areas of my heart so that nothing would hinder Your presence from coming in that we might be focused on him so right now i just want us to just welcome the holy spirit father we welcome you holy spirit lord we welcome you right now lord no matter what circumstances what concerns father lord we pray father god that nothing would hinder us from welcoming you here right now that we open up our hearts that we open up our lives that we open up our minds so that you are welcome, so that we might worship you in spirit and in truth, God. So Lord, we say, have your way in our spaces, Father God. Have your way, Father, in our lives. And Lord, that you would be lifted high, God, and that your spirit would have free reign, Father God, to do as he does, uh, as he does, Father God. So Lord, we just thank you, God. We welcome you. We worship you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Amen. Are you guys ready to worship the Lord? Woo! Come on, let's put our hands together.
you, God, because we know that you hold it all. It's all in your hands, God. So we're able to rest in you, God. We're able to have peace, God. The peace of God can reign in every situation. The peace of God can reign in our lives. And we thank you, God. Come on, church, just thank him. Let us thank, let thankfulness be in your mouth towards him this morning. We thank you, God. Let your peace reign in this place this morning, God. We give you glory and honor. Of 
how great is our God. All the voices lifted. How great is our God. Sing with me. him up. He is worthy. He is worthy. Oh, we love you, God. We lift you up. You are great. We praise your holy name. No matter the circumstance, Father. Lord, we lift you up, God. Lord, we honor you, God. We exalt you, God, for you are worthy, God, of all praise. You are great. You are mighty, God. You are powerful, and there is none like you. Thank you, Father. You know, Paul gave us such in clear instructions. In Philippians chapter 4, 6, he said, Don't be anxious about anything. Yeah, the concerns that you have, your family, challenges at work, the crisis. Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, make your requests known to God and the peace of God that we just sang about. The peace, of, the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart. How do you guard your heart from anxiety and an anxious soul is thanksgiving and prayer. Thanksgiving and prayer and also in the context that Jesus is coming soon. That was the verse before. It says, knowing that Jesus is coming soon, which means God is sovereign. He sees the bigger picture. And for some of us, we're so wrapped up in what's happening right now. But I want to let you know that you don't have to be anxious. You don't have to be concerned because God has a big picture. And he sees everything. And he is there and he is guiding and he is piecing together every portion of your life. And so that's why when we come here in prayer and, and this time, we can take our concerns and anxiety and we can begin to thank Him. We begin to praise Him saying, God, in light of Your goodness and Your greatness, God, I can trust in You. So I thank You, God. God, I pray. I seek after You. And maybe right now you have a concern or maybe right now you've got a, a challenge. If you're going through something right now, I want you to just lift it up to the Lord right now. Maybe it's, it may be financial. It may be emotional. It may be a physical need, but right now, I want you to lift it up. And by lifting it up, we're saying, God, we surrender it to you. Father, Lord, we thank you for the word that brings life. Lord, we thank you, Father God, Lord, that we don't have to be anxious about everything. And Lord, it's the peace. Lord, it's the peace that surpasses all understanding, guards our heart. And so, Lord, today we bring our prayer to you, God. Lord, we lift up everything to you. We lift it up to you and saying, God, Lord, we trust you, Father God. Lord, you are sovereign, God. Lord, you are good. And Lord, I'm going to trust you in this, in this sickness. I'm going to trust you in this trial. I'm going to trust you in this circumstance. And so, Father, right now, take it, Father God. Lord, take it, Father God. We exchange with heaven this morning. We exchange right now, Lord, our emotions our worry, our depression, our challenges, God. Lord, we exchange it and we give it to you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I believe, I believe God is impressing on my heart that he's speaking to someone saying that right now the trial that you are in is a season of testing. There's some of us in here that is going through testing of faith where it's it's being next being put by a fire and it's like everything inside of you is almost saying I want to resist God but it's challenging it's but right now God is saying don't give up don't give up it's a season of testing it's it's just it's a small season but right now in the bigger picture you will see God's hand moving in a very big way he's moving in your life in your family right now so don't get lost in the season but just trust in me if that's you just lift it up to him God I just trust you in that season I'm trusting you with my life in the season that I'm at God I'm lifting it to you God we thank you Lord we we trust you with all of our life we love you in Jesus name and all God's people said, Amen. Come on, let's give Him praise. Come on. 
Hallelujah. Woo. Amen. Before you're seated, go ahead and throw a shaka at, at your family around. Thank you for being with us, the Ohana, the family of God. We're so blessed. And those of you online, thank you for joining us in your spaces. We pray that the Holy Spirit is touching you. How many of you are excited to be here in church? Wow, the atmosphere is electrified with passionate worshipers in here. And it's just so powerful. And, you know, we're going to continue our worship through our giving. So those of you online, we want you to know also here, uh, we have our awesome platform at uh, www.firstalg.com. You can give through, uh, through our website as well as scan the QR code right over here. And, uh, and also if you want to mail in, you can also do it. Send it through to 3400 Moana Lua Road. And, you know, I just, I just believe so much in this time where it's kind of like been challenging that we need to act constantly in generosity. We have to keep a generous heart. Keeping a generous heart is a choice. It's a choice of life that we uh, act upon our generosity. And, I, and I, that's why I love that scripture. It says that it is way more blessed to give than to receive. And I found that true in my life. I know you've found it true in your life that you, there's an intrinsic joy and internal peace that happens when you actually give and you see, and you see the blessings of giving. And uh, what, uh, what I'm just so excited about is, is what even in this season right now, as we're reaching to our churches, we're seeing God touch our missions churches, even in the midst of COVID. In the midst of, uh, even with the School for Christian Growth, we're seeing a lot of people uh, come into the classes and we're having uh, record-breaking numbers of people getting fed in the spirit. And I, would, I just want to encourage you guys, as we're giving, we, are, we believe that God is taking the seed that we plant to bring it to the gospel, not just to here in Hawaii, but all around the world. So I just want to encourage you with that. Let's continue to be, have a heart and choose a heart of generosity in this time of scarcity. And so um, go ahead and you can give online at www.firstaog.com. And uh, we want to definitely give you those opportunities. But let's pray and lift up our offering to the Lord. Father, we just thank you, God. Lord, Lord, that I, I, like I always say, Father God, we get to follow in our Father's footsteps, God. And God, Lord, as we obey you in our tithes and our offering, Father God, as we, as we walk in generosity, Lord, I just pray, God, Lord, that you would take the seed that we plant today, God, may it be fruitful, and Lord, the fruit will remain, Father God. It won't just kind of disappear, Lord, but it will produce good fruit in souls being reached and lives being transformed. We love you, Lord. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand and worship with us this morning. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never failed me. In all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's sing that again. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. In all my days, I've been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay. I will sing of the goodness of God. 
Testing. It's amazing you guys heard me <laughs> without turning this thing on. Praise God. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And I want to welcome those of you that are joining us online. And um, I believe God has a word for us today. But before I get into the word, uh, let me just make a very, very special announcement. Uh, because uh, this coming Wednesday, and this is, this is for all of our uh, members in our church. And you have been accepted in membership this is the one time of the year where you get to shine and exercise your duty as a member. And uh, so you have been receiving, you should have been receiving notices, emails, and uh, of course the announcements about uh, this coming membership meeting. And uh, every year we are required to conduct our annual membership meeting and uh, where we, uh, uh, you know, give our financials. We also vote on our new slate of uh, board members. And if we don't make our quorum, we can't conduct the meeting, and that puts us in a predicament. So I'm calling on all members to uh, please pay attention. This coming Wednesday at 6.30. What time? 6.30. Now, uh, because of the, the COVID, and, and we're trying to be sensitive for those that uh, may not be you know, uh, able to come in, we are going to be doing something different. We're going to be doing both in person as well as online. And, uh, but whether you're in person or online, you need to pre-register. And that's because we're going to be voting using our mobile device. So when you pre-register, it's basically very simple. Put in your name, put in your, your phone and your email. That way we're going to communicate to you. And we're going to send you the links. We're going to send you. It gives you an opportunity when it's time for you to vote. You're just going to vote for um, the three selections. And um, so uh, we need you to. We need you to. Uh, sorry, I don't know what's happening, but uh, we need you to uh, pre-register. Once you are pre-registered, uh, at beginning at on the day of Wednesday, 5:30 to 6:30 is when you check in. So we're going to send you a link, and you need to just reply to the link. And, uh, you know, whoever responds, that will give us the number of quorum, num number of people that are pre-registered, which will allow us to conduct business. If we don't reach our quorum, we can't conduct a meeting. So we'll just say, aloha, everyone. Sorry, we didn't meet our quorum. So right now, we, we don't have enough, and so I'm, I'm told to really uh, encourage you. And uh, so we're going to be, uh, once you register, we send you the link. There are going to be diff different ways where you can watch if you're online. Uh, you can watch it through our church online from our platform. But if you don't have a computer, we're going to be texting you a couple of links where you can, it'll just link you to the live stream. And um, when it's time to vote, we'll, we'll give you instructions. If you don't have a mobile device, uh, don't worry. If you show up here, 
we can social distance you, put you in a classroom downstairs, in a corner, in the closet, somewhere, <laughs> give you a mobile device, and you can vote. So we, we're going to do whatever we can to, to um, uh, you know, uh, help you to get to be involved. So please, uh, you know, uh, take this seriously. I need to, even those that are, that are online, we need you to register. So I'd like to see the numbers bump up. Uh, within the next couple of days. You can do actually do it online now from your phone. Go on to the church website, but please pay attention to the message, okay? And uh, so that is uh, what's happening. Now tonight, let me just encourage you to come back, and we have uh, a special uh, guest I've invited, Dr. Corey Liao, and he's going to be sharing on a very important topic tonight in our Crucial Conversation and uh, so you don't want to miss that. Also, we will be receiving our new members tonight that uh, were approved. And so they'll also be able to uh, be a part of this, uh, this coming week's uh, meeting. So praise God. Turn to your neighbor, give him a shock and say, got it, amen. All right? Amen. I want you to open your Bibles, if you would, to Matthew chapter, 20, uh, chapter 11, verse 28. And uh, if you have a U version, you can also access the um, notes there or church online. But in, um, in uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus says, are you tired? Of course, this is from the, the message translation, sort of paraphrase, but it helps to bring out some, uh, some points here. Uh, he says, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitted on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live a freely, live freely and rightly. I've been reading a book uh, entitled An Unhurried Life following Jesus' rhythm of work and rest and uh, by Alan Fadling. And he references a quote by John Ortberg who wrote, hurry is not just a disordered schedule. Hurry is a disordered heart. Let that sink in. I believe we must ruthlessly eliminate hurry from our life. Jesus' unhurried pace stands in contrast to the way we live today in the 21st century. And uh, we need to learn how, from Jesus himself, how to live in the unforced forced, uh, grace of an unhurried pace. And uh, that's what we're going to be focusing on today. If there's one word that best describes uh, Jesus, you know what it is? Relaxed. Let me put it in the pigeon, he was chillaxed, right? He was relaxed. There's nowhere in the Bible where you, where you see Jesus frantic and, and anxious and, and scrambling around like he's, on, he's, he's uh, rushed in anything. Everything that Jesus says was, in a, was an unforced forced rhythm of grace. And we live in a culture uh, that values speed, right? That uh, efficiency and quickness, and we've been trained by actually the media to, to pick up our pace and to run at this unsustainable pace, and to where the culture says that waiting is bad, right? Getting what we want now is good. We don't stop to ask what we're getting or even ask ourselves if we need it. We just, we just feel it, that impulse, and uh, we're out. And hurry is a way in which advertisers has actually been programming the culture and programming us, where we, we unconsciously sometimes just feel hurried, and we have to, we're moving at light speed when we're on the freeway. And uh, where we, we're driving, you know, uh, uh, according to the speed limit, our mind is like there in the office, and we're just frustrated with the people in front of us that are driving too slow, and that's a problem, and that's something that we have to deal with, right? And then, uh, you know, the two words, slow and fast. You know the word slow in a dictionary is defined mostly in a negative way, 
right? The adjective slow, sluggish, time-consuming, right? Um, it's uh, mental dullness. Won't say anything more about that. <laughs> Stupid, not hasty, slow to, uh, here's a positive side, slow to anger. But here's the word fast in the dictionary, defined mostly positive. Fixed firmly, firmly loyal, reckless or dissipated manner, ahead of correct time or schedule. And I've been, actually, I pride myself, you know, to, that I'm pretty fast. In fact, I sometimes brag to my wife, I can actually predict to get from one place to the next within a margin of one minute. I, I have a built-in system in me where I can probably, I can calculate, find the fastest way to get things done. And so when, when there's an obstacle, that uh, unexpected obstacle, I have to be careful that my frustration, the, my blood pressure does not rise up on the inside and get angry with the person who's, who's stopping me. And that's been the area that God has been most dealing with me in my own life. And our culture falsely uh, teaches us hurry is efficient. Hurry is productive. Hurry is evidence of my importance. But the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 21, verse 5, the good news uh, version, it says, God's plans of hard working person leads to prosperity, but everyone who is always in a hurry ends up in poverty. God's commandment to us isn't, listen, isn't get more things done. But instead, God's commandment is to love God with all of our energy, with all of our capacity, with all of our passion, and to extend that love to others. Are we here this morning? Amen. You see, love is not rushed. The Bible says love is patient. Patience is an unhurried virtue. Being unhurried, right? Being unhurried um, is really, uh, doesn't mean it, it's being lazy right? or uninvolved or casual or careless. When we are preoccupied with hurriedness, speed, and efficiency, many times we miss out of a lot of things God is wanting to say to us and wanting to show us. And we, pr we fall prey to the same mistake of being oftentimes too quick to speak and too quick to anger. The Bible says in James chapter 1 in verse 19, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters, you must be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. And uh, how many of us, we've made the mistake of being too quick to speak. We jump to conclusion. We judge others. And then we, we jump to, we get angry quickly. Outbursts of anger. And then later on, we have to repent. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have done that. And that, that's a problem. And that, you know, I'm not saying we never sh make mistakes, but... We should not continually make the same mistake over and over and over again. And then it's almost like a, an abusive husband that, that keeps abusing wife. Oh, please, sorry, I'm sorry, I'll never do it. And he does it again. At some point, he has to go to anger management. At some point, he has to deal with that anger issue. And um, in the same way, we have to deal with these issues in our own lives but a lot of times it has to do with that hurriedness on the inside of us. And so today I want to, I wanna, we want to learn from Jesus the unhurried rhythm of life. How to be unhurried, you know, to relax, right, to resist, and then to, um, to care. So the first thing is uh, we want to learn how to be unhurried to relax. How many of you need to relax a little? Amen. How many of you need to chill out a little, right? We all need to learn to relax. And especially during this time, everyone's on edge. Everything is, is pressing upon us. Uh, uh, the uncertainty, people are on edge. And we've got to consciously, you know, uh, just 
stop and, and strategically stop, take a breath, and get our focus right. Because this, this, uh, this uh, hurriedness and this anxiousness will begin to eat away at us and our family. And uh, we need to exchange our rhythm of rushing to a rhythm of relaxing. We all have rhythms. And if your rhythm, like mine, has been a rhythm of rushing, I've got to consciously exchange my rhythm of rushing to a rhythm of relaxing. You know, that definition of the word relax is uh, make or become less tense or anxious. To diminish the force, rested or engaged in an enjoyable so uh, as to become less tired or anxious. The Latin word, right, is, um, uh, is made up, uh, relax come from a Latin word, which made up of re and lax. Re meaning again, back, anew, against. Lax means wide, spacious, roomy, loose, free, wide. In other words, um, when you have a rubber band, right, a rubber band is when it's tense. It's, it's, many of us are like this. This is our life. And to relax is to let it come back, right? But many times we're, we're so tense, we allow the, the pull of life to keep stretching us. And if we're not careful, we're going to snap, we're going to break. And uh, so to relax, right, we need to let go of the tension, let go of the force. And what happens many times is that, is that things in life gets us so stressed and all of a sudden, ouch, Right? Someone snaps and someone, the, 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 the pressure causes us to lash out on others. Or we, are, we take the brunt of someone else's uh, tension and anxiousness and rush. And um, uh, Alan Fadling, in his book, he writes, Anger rushes us to judgment and perhaps even to vengeance. Anger is, listen, anger is soul hurry. Soul hurry. Patience is soul unhurry. Fretting is soul hur hurry. Peace is soul unhurried and at rest. I hurry when I believe deep down that God is not watching over and caring for me. I rush to do for myself what I, some what I somewhere deep down believe God is failing to do for me. We need to exchange our rhythm of pushing and rushing to a rhythm of relaxing and resting in the presence of God. Can I hear an amen? And in his book, he writes, he quotes from Vincent de Paul, a 17th century French priest dedicated to serving the poor, who wrote, The one who hurries delays the things of God. You ever heard the old adage, haste makes waste? Right? It's true. And I've learned a lot of mistakes. And, uh, you know, I, I, I like sometimes to do things around the house and a handyman. And I get so frustrated because I'm trying to rush, I'm kind of trying to do things quickly. And I drop the screw or screw or drop the light bulb or knock something over. And I get so angry at myself because I, I was trying to rush. And then in, the, in doing that, I end up, you know, causing more problems. And it just... I, you, know, you have to learn from these experiences. And how many times in our own life, in other areas, we've rushed to make a decision. We've rushed to commit ourselves. We've rushed to do things. And later on, we, we, get, we find out that uh, it, wasn't too, it wasn't the right thing to do. What if Abraham hadn't rushed to help God keep his promise by having a child with Hagar? And today we see the, we see the, the, uh, the problem, right? that happened because of uh, Abraham's impatience and Sarah's impatience. Love does not rush. Say that with me. Love does not rush. Love is patience. Patience is the unhurried virtue. And uh, it doesn't lose its temper quickly, quit at the first sign of trouble, rush to judgment, or run away from un comfortable or difficult situation and Jesus we need to learn from Jesus he modeled an unhurried rhythm 
of work and rest. He, he was never in a rush. Believe me, you, you look through the Bible, Jesus, in fact, there are evidences where his disciples were sometimes frustrated because the, he wasn't doing what they thought he should have done. And uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't in a rush. Uh, Jesus was, listen, he was unhurried, but not lazy. So don't use unhurriedness as an excuse to be lazy. Hey, pick up the trash. I'll oh, think about it. Take the trash out. Oh, Pastor Cole says to be unhurried. You know, you know I'm just chillaxing, you know, while the, while the thing is just stink and all of that. You know, I'm not saying that. Don't use, don't quote me and say, well, Pastor Cole says I shouldn't clean up the house because I'm living the unhurried life of the unforced grace. Right? Being unhurried does not mean being lazy. Jesus was engaged, hardworking, purposeful, and he was conscientious. In fact, unhurried people actually are more alert to act when necessary because they're, they're already in tune and they're, they're, they're not sleepy. They're not on the edge where they're, they're, they've la they lack concentration because they're so tired. People who are unhurried are actually more alert, more in tune with what is happening, and they can act quickly. So when a child puts his hand on a, is getting ready to put his hand on a hot stove, you know, the unhurried person is, doesn't, well, I'll just take my time and stroll and see what's going to happen. No, the unhurried person will act immediately and uh, jump into action, right? So in an emergency, hurry makes sense, right? But... We can't live in a state of emergency. We can't live in the state of, of always being, you know, on high alert. That's not healthy. And, um, and that's why what I'm saying is that we need to, we need to sometimes dial back our, in, our emotions, our intensity, and to learn how to, how to exchange our, our hurried uh, rhythm with the unhurried rhythm of Christ. And unhurried people are, are also, they're not lazy, they're not, they're not um, unresponsive to the Lord. Some people say, well, her, that means, you know, if I'm unhurried, uh, you know, I'll just kind of wait till God, you know, tells me to do something or wait till I feel like doing it. No, unhurried people are not resistant or unresponsive to God's invitation or his divine nudges. Uh, in fact, being unhurried enables you to actually notice those nudges and uh, those, you know, those pushes that God places upon us to do something. And I find that the more I'm sensitive, the more I'm relaxed, the more I'm at rest, I can feel God's presence, God's nudging versus when I'm always you know, moving so quickly, I can, I can easily miss the, 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 um, the nudges of the Holy Spirit. And so uh, we, need to, we need to understand that unhurried, be unhurried enough to relax so that we can, we can respond to the move of the Holy Spirit. The second thing is unhurried enough to resist. Unhurried enough to resist. Hurrying to act can come at a great cost. The story I think about is, comes from Saul and Samuel. You remember that, that story? Samuel tells Saul to wait, right? Uh, Samuel, uh, Samuel is a prophet. Saul is a king, a new king. And, uh, you know, only the prophet could offer the sacrifices. The king uh, was to lead the army and... Um, so Samuel went away for a while, but uh, there was a time when things got a little tense, and Saul, he, he, gets, uh, he starts to feel the pressure, and he doesn't wait seven days, but in the face of danger and uh, the, the drop of, of his, the morale of his troops, he gives in to the temptation, and he makes that offering himself. And only moments later, right after Samuel, the prophet, arrives just as he promised, but it was too late. Saul had already sinned 
and he made the sacrifice, something that he shouldn't have done. Instead of trusting God's prophet, you know, he Saul took actions into his own hands. He rushed, he made his decision to offer the sacrifice that actually cost him his leadership. If you read in, in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 13, it says, how foolish, this is Samuel. Samuel exclaimed, you have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. Had you kept it, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever, but now your kingdom must end. For the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. The Lord has already appointed him to be the leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. When we rush, especially when we rush in the areas where God says, tells us to wait, our hurriedness, our rushing ahead comes at a great cost. And the, the, the consequences of disobedience is, is way higher than the sacrifices of waiting. And you can never get back sometimes in, uh, what we lose in our disobedience, in, in our rushing. And so we need to pay attention to this. Our culture values quick decisions uh, uh, you know, uh, that leaders make. And, and almost wears busyness at a, as a uh, symbol of, of status. And, but none of these things uh, reflect the, the values of Jesus. Jesus said that I only do those things that I see the Father doing. I only speak what the Father says to me. Jesus was totally surrendered and uh, dedicated in trusting his heavenly Father. And when, in fact, when Lazarus, his close friend, dies, uh, Jesus actually waits two days before going to him. You would think that Jesus would draw everything, rush over, and be there, but it, Jesus waited. And some would say, Jesus, don't you care? This is your, your best friend, and he's sick, and you should have been there. And that's why, you know, when Mary and Martha saw him, they said, Lord, why didn't you come earlier? He's dead. It's too late. And, uh, but Jesus was, you know, he was walking and being moved by the leading of the Holy Spirit. And uh, at the same time, we, we also know the story where uh, Jesus, he's on his way to minister to Jairus' daughter who was at the point of death. And then, then Jesus, he gets stopped by this woman who has an issue of blood. She's bleeding, and he ministered to her. But as he does that, right, Jairus' daughter dies, and he has to deal with that. But you see... What's happening, he, Jesus could have been like f frustrated and you're putting too much pressure on me and can't you see, lady, I can't stop. I'm on my way here. But we find that Jesus is just, he's, he's walking, he's moving at a different pace and uh, he has total trust. And this is where hurry is the great temptation we must, that must be defeated. We've got to defeat hurriedness in our life. Her, hurry looks like impulsive, knee-jerk reactions. I'll, I'll, you know, act now because I may never have another chance. How many of you feel sometimes you're, you're shopping for something and someone wants you to make a decision, a big decision? I can tell you what. I, I just have an aversion to that. Don't pressure me to make a decision. Let, give me some time. Because, you know, I do not want to make an, a hasty decision and be, commit myself to something that I'll regret later on. But, but sometimes we, uh, either it's the pressure put upon us or the pe pressure on the inside where we, we sometimes are rushed to make decisions. And it's a temptation, right? The rush to find my, my significant other. The rush to, to get X amount of dollars or whatever, we, we sometimes are, we fall to that temptation. And uh, the temptation to hurry is fueled, listen, it's fueled by the lie that the only good to be had must be grabbed now or never. And that's where the, the devil lies to us. You better get it now. You better do it now. Or you'll never get the chance to, you know, to do it again. And, and, and if you miss this opportunity, that's it. God doesn't work that way. And um, if I had time, I would tell you how the Lord spoke to me that Sister Cole was the one for me. 
because I was under pressure. You know, I didn't know what to do. And, and the, the, Lord, the Lord showed me. But it was the way the Lord spoke to me, it was in an unhurried spirit. And it just kind of took the pressure off of me. And, um, and so we, we need to understand and know how, to, how the, the Lord moves. Jesus defeated the lies of hurry in the wilderness. You got, remember when Jesus started his ministry? Um, he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. And um, it was there for 40 days of fasting. The devil came to tempt him. Now, the Spirit of God led Jesus for a test. But many times in our time of testing, the devil will come in to tempt us. And there's a big difference between God's test and the devil's temptation. The difference is the source. If it's God, it's a test. If it's the devil, it's a temptation. And uh, the devil came to tempt him. And uh, three times, three different ways. And I'll, I'll, I'll uh, use um, uh, the, uh, what uh, Alan Hadling uh, refers to, the three temptations. These are, these are kind of par paraphrased, if you, but uh, it just helps you to understand. Temptation one was to grab what you need. Temptation two, take charge. Temptation three, right, prove God cares. We're going to look into that, right? Because Jesus, Jesus overcame all of these temptations that had to do with rushing God's process. How many of you know that when it, in the kingdom of God, there's no, sh no shortcuts? And the devil was offering Jesus a shortcut to glory. And Jesus knew that, that the only way to glory for himself was through the path of the cross. A convenient, it wasn't convenient and it wasn't comfortable. And what the devil was offering him was a, was a you know, a convenient shortcut way to get to glory. And uh, it was a lie. The first temptation, he comes to Jesus and he says, you know, are you hungry? Turn this bread into stone, right? It lets, the, de the devil says, let's put it this way. You're hungry, Jesus? Act now and make yourself a meal from these stones. What was Jesus' reply? Bread isn't everything. And it isn't what I need most. I'll trust my father to prove what I need most when he is ready to provide it. So the devil was saying, Jesus, hey, you're the son of God. Just go ahead and, and, and uh, turn these bread into stone. And uh, trust in yourself. Just go ahead and grab it. Jesus, no. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Can I hear an amen? amen. And uh, so he, he, he countered the temptations of the enemy to just do things in his own ability. The second temptation was really a temptation to just take charge, Jesus. Take charge of your life. The devil says, you've been uh, announcing the kingdom is near. Well... I can make all these kingdoms of the world yours right now if you just worship me. And Jesus replies, not a chance, Satan. I worship and serve God alone. He will reveal his kingdom and give me authority in his good time. What was he saying? And what do we need to understand? Legitimate authority and genuine honor are always given, not taken. So the temptation to seize power rather than to wait to receive it from God's hand in God's time and in God's way. And that's the devil's hook. The devil's hook is many times is just do things for God don't wait or worry about doing things with God. You see the difference? I'm just going to go and do things for God. How many of you would rather do things with God? Can I hear an amen? So, so the, the devil will tempt, just go ahead, do this, go, do this. And, and Jesus says, wait a minute, it's not about just me doing things. It's about me waiting to do things with God. 
end. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. And so the temptation, the pressure to hurry up and just take charge is many of the temptations we face in our own life. Just take charge. Just do it. Don't wait on God. God doesn't, you know, God doesn't, you know, not going to help you out. You're going to have to help yourself. You heard that saying. God's not going to help. You're going to help yourself. And, and that's, that's a great lie of the enemy. And God cares for you. And he will take care of you. And so that temptation too. And then uh, Dr. Allen talks about the third temptation. Prove that God cares. Let me ask you, how many of you agree God cares for us? Can I hear an amen? But how many of us, many times, you know, the enemy comes in, oh, God doesn't care. God doesn't know what you're really feeling and going through. And so we, we end up, you know, testing, tempting God. And uh, the devil says to us, why wait to prove that you are the son of God. A miraculous jump from this temple peak with a flashy rescue from God's angels would prove your identity in that moment. And Jesus replies, why would I test the father's timing or provision? And uh, Satan often, Satan tempts Jesus to test God's protection of him and to and try to force him to act. Make him do what he has promised is what Satan was really saying. You see, we have to choose to trust in his care. And as he provides, we come to trust him with more and more of our heart. And um, that's why in this, in this uh, when, we, when we learn you know, to be unhurried, we have to be unhurried enough to resist the temptations and lies of the enemy that would try to get us to be anxious, to rush, to jump ahead, to do things um, ahead of God. But rather, to be unhurried means to trust in God. Amen? And, and, I, and I close with this final point is this, unhurried enough to care. So, we need to be unhurried enough to rest, to relax, unhurried enough to resist. But thirdly, and I, I believe just as important, is unhurried enough to care. Why? Because love is unhurried to care. Love is unhurried to care. Do you remember the story of the Samaritan? The man who cares for this wounded stranger who encountered thieves along the, his path, and they beat him up, left him there to die. And, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, he finds this priest, the Levites came, and they saw, they saw this, this man beaten up, dying. And they see, and they walk the other way. And uh, then the Samaritan comes by, and he slows down in this unhurried nature, and slows down enough to care for this, this man. And uh, what is the moral of the story? Well, let's just pick it up in, in Luke chapter 10, verse 30, in verse um, 32. A temple assistant walked over and looked at him lying there, but he also passed by on the other side. Then a despised Samaritan came along. And when he saw the man, he felt compassion on him. Going over to him, the Samaritan soothed his wounds with olive oil and wine and bandaged him. Then he put the man on his own donkey and took him to an inn where he took care of him. The next day, he handed the innkeeper two silvers, silver coins, telling him, take care of this man. If his bill runs higher than this, I'll pay you. The next time I'm here. Now, which of these three would you say was neighbor to the man who was attacked by the bandits? And Jesus said, the man replied, the one who showed mercy. Then Jesus says, now go and do likewise. So what's the moral of the story? You got to pay attention to this because I believe this is really 
what God is saying to us, right? The more of the story, hurry glances and pass by while love gaze and stay and act. Hurry will glance and walk by while love gazes and stays and acts and cares. The priest and the Levite, for whatever reason, they were busy, they had schedule, they had an agenda, they, maybe they, they, couldn't, they couldn't touch someone that was dead or something, or, and, but they, they were too much in a hurry to stop and care. The Samaritan stopped to care for the wounds of the stranger at that moment. You see, love is willing to slow down enough to bear the cost of caring. Think about it. We all say we love. We all use that word love, but let's, let's put it in, in context here. Love is not so much in a hurry. Love will slow down enough to care, to listen, to help. Love doesn't measure care in terms of time. The Samaritan took the initiative and acted, right, and uh, ministered to the man's wounds. He traveled a journey, he traveled um, far, right, and uh, he, he, was, he was on a journey, but he stopped to care for this man. The Samaritan was unhurried enough to truly care for others. And I pray that during this time, um, we are being, uh, how should I say, tested in many ways. Um, I, I don't like what I see happening in, during this COVID because it's, and it's none of, it's many times we don't even realize it, but you know, social distancing, put on the mask. And if we're not careful, we can almost become um, strangers to people. We can almost become, well, that's, that's your problem, right? I, I, I got my mask on. I'm keeping my social distancing. And we, we, if we're not careful, we become like the priests and the Levites. When maybe perhaps Jesus is, is you know, sending us to that person to help, but we kind of hide. We're behind this mask and this social distancing, that, and we're kind of rushed to do our own thing, and we, we, we don't stop to care for people. I pray that the Lord will help all of us, myself included, that, that, we, will, that we will not fall into that, into that trap of the enemy, that in spite of and in the face of some of the challenges that we're facing, that we would say, God, you are my protector, hallelujah. You care for me. You're gonna, you're gonna be with me, and you're gonna help me to, to be a blessing to others and not be so rushed in, in all of the, the changes that are happening that we don't take time to say hi. We don't take, you know, we don't stop to, to just, you know, let, I know right now, right after service, we're all programmed, right, because of all programmed to leave, right? No fellowshipping, no talking. And I pray, you know, I understand that. But be careful that that doesn't become a culture that we that's with us for the moving forward. I'm praying that, you know, once all of this is, you know, past, we can get back to fellowshipping. Come on. We can get back to caring and smiling and, and just sitting around and talking. And thank God for yesterday we had a great time uh, with uh, the men's uh, breakfast, Pastor Sam, and we had a little over 100 men that wakes up to be here at 6 o'clock in the morning and uh, the men are waking up to 4 o'clock to cook the breakfast. And uh, the worship team is here. And they got a good word. And afterwards, they, they sat, down, sat down on tables, social distance. But at least you had, I think, three people per table. But it was good. I got to meet uh, Dax. I met one of your friends, Joe. <laughs> he was there, sat on his table. And we had a great conversation. And I missed that. I miss that when we're done, everyone's gone. And I say, oh my. So I pray that as the as body of Christ, we will 
recognize the importance of fellowship. I want to encourage all our connect group, care group, please, this is a, we need to stay faithful to our connect groups. We need to stay faithful to our care groups because pretty much that's the only thing that, that uh, provides some kind of face-to-face fellowship with one another, even if it's on Zoom, even if it's on you know, uh, some kind of platform. We need, we need to be connected to each other and not allow this virus to separate us and, and cause us to be cold towards each other and so uh, self-conscious you know, about what, you know, what might be out there. And, uh, and we need to really, we, we, we uh, take precautions, but we also need to recognize that there is a downside for not caring and loving one another. And um, I just wanted to, to challenge us to do that. I'm going to ask the worship team to come on up. And uh, I, I just, I, I believe that God is, is going to really help us to remove the unhurried spirit that oftentimes uh, characterizes the day that we're, we're living in, the culture that we're living in. Too busy to call one another. Too busy to care. And uh, we need to, we need to um, you know, take time. To, we may not be able to f- talk to each other. It's really hard now when someone, pray for um, uh, the Roy Bisutani. Uh, he had to go to the hospital and, and different, uh, Pastor Janet is, was in a hospital. Thank God she's at home. And uh, it, the, the, the hard thing is they don't allow anyone to visit. And I can understand. And what's even harder is sometimes your own spouse can't visit you. And I'm not sure, uh, pretty soon uh, Kim will be giving birth. Do they allow husbands to, to be there? To <laughs> hope they don't let the, the wife deliver, the, ba- the mother deliver the baby by herself. But, you know, it's so difficult nowadays with all of this fear that is causing a wedge and, and uh, something that is really um, not helpful in, in our relationship. But, but we can... We can uh, in our own lives, regulate. We need to regulate our rhythm. And we need to, we need to exchange our rhythm of rush. And, and sometimes it's a conscious act. For me, it's a conscious act because I'm so wired to, to just be efficient, to be, you know, to, sometimes I'm way ahead and I have to dial it back and say it's not important. And uh, sometimes it used to cause you know, pressure between me and Sister Coco, she's already dialed back. <laughs> she's at a different speed. <laughs> she's, she's behind me and I'm ahead. And it's hard to reconcile ourselves together because we get some tension going there. And, and I have to say, okay, God, you know, we're one flesh, but we're, she's, she's trying to go, trot, trot, trot. she's trying to pick up herself and I'm trying to pull back. It's not an easy task, I can tell you that. But uh, we have to do it, right, to keep the peace. The rabbit and the turtle. <laughs> so um, I'm going to ask the worship team to come on up. And, and here, here's the thing, okay. Uh, I'll, I'll just going to share a little bit. Of, when, you know she, she's uh, already blinded in one eye. And she can see about 70% in the other eye. 60%. So it's, she, you know, close your eyes and if you, cl- you squinch the other eye, that's, it's not clear. And so I've had to, because, you know, sometimes for me, um, I think in a way I was maybe, uh, I live more like in the Japanese culture. The guy is about 10 feet ahead and the wife is 10 feet behind, right? But for me, uh, when she had a couple of spills, a couple of falls, my heart, my heart sank. And one of them, I, well, a couple of them I saw. Uh, she, she was in the bathroom and and she slid and she fell and my heart just sank and um, I had to make a conscious effort because my pace sometimes I'm r- r- rushing to get to the car to open up get, and then she's behind but now I have to change my programming and I have to slow down put my hand back and when there's a, when there's a step or there's a si- uneven sidewalk I've got to stop slow down and, and help her and and that's why because I love her because love does not want to see your significant other fall right and so you have to stop and it's 
it's been challenging because, uh, you know, it's not what I was programmed. It was, it's not my rhythm. But I had to make some change. And, um, but she's also making the change. She's trying to pick up her pace. <laughs> I said, because I said, if I, she goes, uh, can you slow down? I said, if I slow down, I'm standing still. Because I'm already like, I'm walking like this, just walking. I'm, and she's like behind me. Says, so I said, can you help me at least pick up the pace a little? I'll slow down. Can we meet in the middle? I said, because I can't stand still. And so we had to work out, a, we had to negotiate. So she's picking up her speed and, and I'm slowing down. But it's, it's, uh, it's something that we're, we're uh, trying to match our rhythm because we're one flesh. Amen. And so husbands got to slow down, or sometimes wives are faster than the husbands. And the, the, the wife, ah, come on, come on, come on, husband, come on, you're too slow, you're too slow. And um, so, but the husband's like at a real unhurried rhythm, like, and come on, come on, come on, let's, let's get the thing, John, you know, clean. <laughs> so uh, different paces and all of that. But, so you know, whatever you are, whether you're the rabbit or the turtle, if you're married to a turtle, if you're a rabbit, and you're married to a turtle, hallelujah, be happy, praise God. Put your trust in the Lord that God will help you. So, um, yeah, but the most important thing is you maintain that unity. No sense me just, you know, and, and what, because whatever happens to her will affect me. And whatever happens to me affects her, so we're one. Praise God. Let's bow our heads together as we close in prayer. Father, thank you for your word. I pray, Father, that um, during this, this um, series of strategic stops, Father, that we will learn the unhurried rhythm of life, that you'll take worry, you'll take hurry out out of, of, out of our life, that we will, we will not be driven by fear, we will not be driven by, by selfishness, we will not allow the spirit of this world to, to cause us, Lord, to just go forward and and uh, not care for others. But I pray that we will learn to exchange our rhythm of rush, Lord, with the rhythm of Christ, who cared, who remained engaged, who showed mercy, who loved people, and who was not rushed, but at the same time was not lazy. He was there. He was always responsive to people's needs. He was always responsive, Lord, to especially to the, the nudging of the Father. And I pray that that will be our heart. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're here and you would say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I need Jesus. I, I've not been walking with him. I've actually been kind of doing my own thing. But today I want to make a commitment to surrender my life to Jesus because I my life is stressed. My life is just out of whack. But I need, I need to um, open, my, open my heart to accept Christ in. If that is you, put up your hand. Anyone here in this service, you know you, 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 you need Christ and you want, to worship, you want to give your life to Jesus. And if you're online, uh, just talk to one of the, the hosts online. Let's all stand. And let's just, uh, I'm going to ask the worship team to just lead us in a time of, of worship.
Would you put one hand on your heart and lift the other hand up? Father, that is our prayer. That's our desire. Father, to, Lord, to learn how to walk in the unhurried rhythm, the unhurried pace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit will help us, Lord, to be unhurried enough to learn to rest and relax in your presence. Remove the tensions, remove the anxieties, remove the pressures to perform, the pressure to achieve, the pressure to, to push forward and to, and to uh, run ahead oftentimes of you. Lord, I pray that you'll just help us to be unhurried enough to resist the temptations Lord, of the enemy that would try to get us to trust in ourselves, to, to grab things and, and to take charge and to move ahead without you. God, I pray that you help us, Lord, to resist that temptation, resist the lies, and to know that God does care for us. And, and his timing is the best timing. And God's ways are not our ways, Lord. And that, Lord, you, you are... You're helping and leading us and teaching us how to be led by the Holy Spirit, not to be led by our impulses and our fears. And I pray, Father, that you'll also help us to, to be unhurried enough to care for those that are hurting around us, Lord, to care for the relationships, to care for our kids, to, to listen to our kids, to what they're going through, and, and, uh, and Lord, to listen to our spouse, to listen to the people, what they're going through, to not be so rushed, and we, we sometimes fail to feel their pain. And so, Lord, I thank you, God. I just pray that you just uh, continue that work in each one of our lives, God. We thank you in Jesus' name, and all of God's people in agreement say, Amen. Praise God. God bless you. Uh, you may be seated as Pastor Josh comes up. Wow. What a powerful word. I mean, I think that that's really to reject a hurried life. And uh, I, I love, I think like what he was talking about, if you're a planner, uh, God bless you. Because my wife taught me like to schedule in time for people. Instead of just going off and just kind of like, and sometimes that helps, right? When you put things in the calendar and then you know, but then in the meantime, keeping your head up and ears open for when God might lead you through that. So I found my wife has blessed my life more than I think I, I blessed her. She's like, where's your calendar? I was like, I don't know. I was like, I got to schedule in all these people because she's helping me to learn not to just hurry along and kind of go. But I just feel like as the Holy Spirit leads us every day, we're, we're moving as he also teaches us, just like how the Holy Spirit led Christ. Um, but thank you for that word, Pastor Cole. And I think that's like something that we can take away today. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at our weekly announcements. Uh, turn your attention to the video screen as they come up at this moment. Hey, hey First, first Fam. fam. <laughs> I'm Jory. And I'm Paige, and we have some announcements for you. Woohoo! <laughs> first off, we got our School for Christian Growth. It starts today. We talked about it last week, but today is the first official day. We have many classes to offer, such as Hawaii's Providential History. The Story of Marriage with John and Lisa Bevere. Loving Our Kids on Purpose with Danny Silk. Where is God when it hurts? especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. Unshakable hope, building lives on God's promises. And finally, detours, the unpredictable path to our destiny. All of these great classes will be offered in person and online through Zoom. You can sign up online at firstaog.com as well as find out more information about these classes. Our annual members meeting is this week on September 30th. As members, you're very important to us and we need you at our meeting. And we understand because of COVID, a lot of you may not be able to attend in person. So please go online at firstalg.com to pre-register for voting. We'll be voting new members for our church board, which is crucial for the decisions that this church makes. So please be a part of it. And remember, that is September 30th. Don't forget to pre-register to vote. You know what else is very important to us? A clean church. Yes, and we want to be good stewards to clean God's house this Saturday for our all church work day. Check with your regional pastor for more details, such as a start time or anything else you need to know. 
Now, before we go, we just want to congratulate East Honolulu on their new campus location. Let's go, guys. <laughs> God has definitely provided for them during this pandemic, and we will be celebrating with them next Sunday on October 4th. We'll have more details on our online bulletin. That's all the time we have today, guys. Stay connected with news and updates at firstaog.com. Be sure to use our hashtag FAOGHawaii on Facebook and Instagram. Be blessed and, and aloha. aloha. Woo! <laughs> Let's thank our media team. Thank you, Paige and Jory. Uh, just a couple of announcements, just like uh, how the message talked about, uh, we want to let you know as a pastoral staff that we want to pray with you. So you can always text the phone number 808-836-2300. Uh, the pastors check it often. So if you have like a prayer request, a family need, or maybe immediately in your own life a crisis, we definitely want to pray with you. Uh, that's one of the things. So right there on the slide you can see. 808-836-2300, uh, please text us. We want to know what's happening. We want to be able to pray together. We have an intercessory team, and we want to make sure that you know that we care. So please take that time to uh, text in your prayer requests. We check it often. Also, just as you saw, this coming Wednesday, just to reiterate, it's our annual uh, business meeting. Super exciting about what God is doing in our church. This past year has been a pivotal year. And we've been working, the communications team has been working on the reports. And I want, I want to let you know, it's going to be a, like a report like you've never seen before. I guess everything's kind of like, this year is like you've never seen before. So like this report is going to be incredible. And you'll see what God has done across the world, but also how we've made pivotal moves and change, changes in our ministries in reaching out to our community. And of course, for those who are members, it is your duty to come to these meetings as you signed up to be a member and you became a member, you are to be at these membership meetings. So please be there and sign up today. Uh, it is a mandate from uh, the Lord through his servant, Pastor Cole. And you need to be there. So please come out because, of course, we need to vote for our new um, board members, as Pastor Cole has already mentioned. As, as you heard also this uh, coming Saturday, we have All Church Work Day across all of our regions. And if you're like, well, I, uh, you attend here, but you live in Makakilo, why don't you go and help Makakilo in their, in their church work day? Let's go ahead and uh, let's take part in, in helping clean the, the, uh, the church, the, the house of the Lord. And last but not least, tonight we're going to hear from Dr. Liao and Pastor Ko on our crucial conversation. If you've been uh, wondering, like, man, um, how to save your marriage, uh, sleep is really important. Maybe this is the thing that really can really be a turning point. I've, a lot of our pastors have sleep apps and they're learning about sleep and it's helping their marriages. And maybe you're like, man, my husband snores. He needs to hear about it tonight. Come tonight and it's going to be a powerful message. Um, but really, um, we're, we're just awesome. It's going to be great to hear a conversation in our series of strategic stops uh, from Dr. Leal and Pastor Cole. Can we all stand at this time? I saw some wives nudging husbands. I was like, you need to get the, you need to be there tonight. <laughs> uh, let's pray. Father, we just thank you, God, for the word. We thank you, God, uh, Lord, for uh, all that you're doing, God. And we just ask that you would just continually be with us, God, as we continually walk according to the rhythms that you lay before us. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Those of you who are for, here for the first time, please join us in the Aloha Fellowship Center. Our pastor would like to get to know you. And those who are in Bob Yee's class, please make your way. If you're going to come to the entrance downstairs, the double doors downstairs in the front. Let praise awaken inside of every heart.